How many bosses can you battle and beat as the very first boss in Hollow Knight? That's what I wanted to find out, and then it up being surprising who we could and couldn't reach throughout this run. We started out as normal, free falling into King's Pass, said a quick hello in passing to Elderbug, and down the well into Forgotten Crossroads. Now, standard first boss to encounter is the False Knight, so one to the counter there. Taking a different path, mm, this could be useful later, lets us meet Gru's mother, so easy first two, and we're already into skips. With our first skip of the run being False Knight, but we don't necessarily need to beat him, we give him a quick whack to stun, and then we can break the gates, progress onwards. Sure, we don't get his drop, but we'll find out we don't actually need it. Grab Vengeful Spirit to take out the local armadillo. And with this spell, we can now break into our first new area, into Green Path. And straight into another skip, but we have a couple of options for this one. One with help, and one with style. And while saving Zote, we come across our next boss, Ish. Vengeful King doesn't have a name pop-up like the others, but does appear in God Home, so definitely gonna count it. And then of course, we have the main boss of Green Path, Hornet herself. Which then leads to the trickiest part of this challenge. Although we can tick Hornet off as done, because this challenge is about who we can beat as the very first boss, and not allowed to pick up Mothwing Cloak, which we only get after beating Hornet, meaning we continue on with no dash. Bit of searching, and we get access to Fog Canyon, but not done with Green Path just yet. Huh? We find the Dweller in No Eyes, but without Dream Nail, we can't fight it, so can't go on the counter. Initially, I didn't think we could get to the Moss Charger either, but with a repeat of the Fireball trick from earlier, we managed to get to it. Nothing left in Green Path, at least for the moment, so return to Fog Canyon. Said hello to the local thief, <coughs> I mean, uh, local banker, and onto Queen Station, which also has a Fireball skip to do, but this one's much harder. And each fail means a long trek back through Fog Canyon, building up soul to do again, and again, and again. In fact, I failed it so many times, I got frustrated and left. We'll do that in a little bit. Headed back to Forgotten Crossroads as we still have a boss waiting there. By pogoing on these spikes, we climb up and make our way to face the broody Morlock. But after that quick detour, had to go back to banging my head against the wall. But eventually got it. Holy god, that took a while. Into Fungal Waste we go. Got past the Mushroom Bros. No, these ones. And again, if we had Dream Nail, we could have met Elder Who here. Said hello to Cloth, and proceeded to chase Hornet, who was heading to City of Tears. But because we can't get the key needed from False Knight, this path is locked off to us anyway. Unfortunately, we couldn't reach the normal way to Mantis Lords. There was a breakable that thought could pogo off, but nope, just broke. That just left one path remaining, heading straight down. Needed to use a mob to get across this gap, but ended up being a dead end. Shutting off all routes, and thus ending this run. Sort of. Now here we reach a pretty interesting spot. On a previous patch, you were able to pogo an explosion to reach the exit. Now for me on console or current patch, mm, no. But I was curious, so let's turn back time a bit. I load an old save file at a similar spot in the run, not noticing it was Steel Soul, which definitely won't come back to haunt me. And let's see, what if we were still able to reach it? First thing that happens is that we can get Mantis Claw, meaning access to wall climbing, so open the way to Mantis Lords, and they were next on the list. And also with wall climb, we can now access everyone's favorite area, Deep Nest. Now, no point going through the whole of Deep Nest, as there isn't a boss at the end, unlike the other Dreamers. And unfortunately, we couldn't get to Nosk without Monarch Wings, or maybe Crystal Dash. But could say hello to Galleon, and followed up by grabbing the Tram Pass. With that, it was time to get our Deep Nest. Caught the Tram, and into the Ancient Basin. Access to Broken Vessel was a no-go without Crystal Dash, and we have no access to the Abyss until after the second Hornet fight, so no access for this run. <laughs> the next route was a lot more fruitful, with a little help... Hmm... With a little help from a flying enemy, we could now access the City of Tears, and so much opens up for us. Hey Hornet, when does Silk Song come out? And she's gone. The next one is your personal preference. We can get through Soul Sanctum where we do meet a Soul Warrior, albeit a weaker fight than the one guard in Shade Soul, which you can count, or the Soul Master who you reach straight after. Either case, another one to the counter. Now the next one on the list is a pretty major one. Watch your nights. With a bit of pogo in, and then a boost up from an enemy, we're able to reach them pretty easily. Well, easy-ish. But I'll say now we've reached absurd levels, where your first boss being Watch Nights, at least in this what-if scenario. We'll come back to you later. First we make a return trip back to Guru's mother, and now we can use the tram station above, letting us get to the resting grounds, where we could have met Zero. Oh, wait a minute, did I say could? Because here in the resting grounds we get access to Dream Nail, meaning we can fight Zero, and not just that, all the others we can now reach, so they all get added to the counter. With that, we now have a few options, a few paths to take. First one was back to City of Tears, grabbing the King Station, and then headed up, reaching the Blue Lake, which gives us a backdoor access to get Sly, the Shop, and of course, the Lantern. Meaning, we can now enter Crystal Peak. But we disturb Crystal Guardian, who's just trying to have a nap. Crystal Dash, for the moment, we're gonna have to leave, because at this point in the run, I thought this was a dead end. Which was wrong, but we'll be back when I realise. Since we couldn't, Rotation gets Crystal Dash. We head out, get the Elegant Key from Sly, which means the original Soul Warrior is accessible to us, which may or may not count as a new boss, depending on your thoughts from earlier. Quick cab back to Dirtmouth, so we could access the Howling Cliffs. And straight into our next Dream Warrior, the one and only Gorb. I was contemplating Gorb's greatness, 
I had a crazy thought. What about the Grim Troop? Well, we could reach it. The troop spawned and we got a new companion. But there's no way we can fight Grim without any prior bosses, right? But well, we'll grab the Grimkins as we go along and we'll see. Time to head to the sewers. Back to City of Tears and down we go. Heard before seeing our next first boss, Dung Defender. Tried to get to Flute Marm also whilst I was here, but without Desolate Dive, it's a no-go there. Then we headed to the worst, the most horrendous running section in this entire run. Went on the tram and arrived at the Hive. Oh Jesus, the Hive. I cannot put into words how frustrating, how tedious, how annoying this entire section was. And to layer on top, having no dash. And of course, the genius that I am had to continue this playthrough on a Steel Soul save file. One death and this entire run goes into the bin and we have to restart from the top. Meaning couldn't even risk being at 2 health in case one of the double decker bus bees decided to come charging in and hit for 2 damage. With so many enemies that track, fly and sections we were forced to pogo in order to even get to where we needed to go. Yes, after literal hours we did manage to get to Hive Knight, but I'm sure at the cost of some of my sanity. <sighs> Okay, let's move on. We entered our penultimate area, Kingdom's Edge, hoping for a bit more calm. Oh, please no. Although at this point, I'm more grateful to see you than any more bees. Markov is blocked off as we can't get Shade Cloak until after the second Hornet fight, so a definite no on this run. And speaking of the Hornet fight, hmm, problems. Oh, wait a sec, my dear. Ah, we need to do it twice. And a third. With this success though, we can fight the second Hornet fight, or I guess in this case it's the first. Hmm. And actually in the first script of this video, that was it. A fitting boss to end this challenge. But something was still nagging, something that ended up being a bit of a twist in the tale. We returned to Crystal Peak where we did this. Given it did take quite a few goes to actually do that. Nope, nope, nope. And for the second time this run, this opened up a lot more than I initially thought. First that we could actually get another Grimkin. And with a very tight crystal dash, we could also finally get into the Queen Gardens. Meaning after some tricky platforming, a bit of trouble here or there, and another incredibly awkward crystal dash, was able to get the Love Key, which will come in handy shortly. And after a couple of tricky gauntlets, could also face Marmu. Meaning out of all the Dream Warriors, Markoth was the only one we couldn't fight without fighting something else first. Trace Lord we need to Shadow Dash, so we will finish with this area. Returning to Agent Baser with Crystal Dash, we can now reach Broken Vessel, and almost the exact same situation in Deep Nest in order to reach Nosk. This has been such a weird challenge, but still, four left to go. Had to return to my favourite mobs in the world. That was a very generous respawn spot. And after that, climbed up and could battle the Collector. Three left. Next being a classic, acid skipping crossroads to access the teacher's archives and Umu. Two to go. Turns out, for Grimm's quest, the Grim Kidding Crystal Peak turned out to be the only problem one, as we could grab the others pretty easily and end up facing the main man himself. Of course, being respectful, bowing. And that just left one to go. Ish. Now, we could argue that the Vengefly King or Gru's mother counts first in the trial, but I think there's no better way to end this for our first and final boss being the one and only Zoe the Mighty. Hope you enjoyed this weird journey and we'll see you for the next one.